Chapter 12 Later that afternoon, a messenger crow comes to the Tempest Guild and leaves a note outside of the window. The guild leader opens the window all of the way and takes the note, leaving the window open for the breeze to roll in. He walks into Lancaster's study and tells him, Lancaster, you have a message from Dress. It just came. Lancaster reads the note. It reads, Lancaster, I am King Marco II of Dress to the north. We have business. It has come to my attention that these Ethanites here are from your legacy with Ethan the Black. Our spies inform us that their leader is a necromancer named, named Obsidian, a former enslaver, as all of these necromancers were once enslavers. In their ranks is also the remnants of the Black Tower of Murich. We do not know why they have chosen the Northlands as their home, but we hope you can stop them. Meet my court wizard in Castle Dress to speak about this threat to Escadia. Lancaster puts the note in his pocket and sits down, shaking his head. He had thought it over with, e over with Ethan, but it seems others have taken up his cause. He sips wine from a cup and thinks of how he will get the dress on the other side of the world in one piece. He is thinking of ignoring the letter, just as he had given up hope. A Tempest Guild member came in and asked, Something wrong, Lancaster? Lancaster gazed down and said, Yes, King, the King of Dress wants me to help him out. But that is on the other side of the world. It is something personal, something I thought ended a long time ago. Necromancers are rising from the ranks of the enslavers. Let us see Desmond, then Lancaster. Surely, you will have an answer, the member said. They went into the Tempest room, where Desmond was peering into the Tempest and told him about their problem. Simple solution, really. You are in the presence of masters of controlling the Tempest. We never leave our guild, and how do you think that is? Desmond told them with confidence. We summon all our, all our things from the Tempest. We act through the world through it, observe it, and have mastered its uses. He then says, Interesting, Lancaster says to him with his arms crossed. This will be a joint effort, Lancaster. If you do not mind, that is. Lancaster smiles and says, Sure, I could use all the help I can get. Desmond explains to Lancaster that the Tempest Guild has a legal transport system from guild to guild, one that uses green dragons in the Tempest, specifically the ethereal realm of dreams, to transport guild members to other guild locations. The closest guild is in the desert settlement of Raymond's Rest in Mangor. It is surrounded by mountains, so it will be difficult for them to reach Dress from there, but they have no choice. Desmond writes something on a piece of parchment and drops it into the Tempest, having it dissolve, and they are all transported to the Realm of Dreams, riding, gr gr riding green dragons. Before they know it, they appear at, in a guild hall in Raymond's Rest. They are greeted by the guild porter there. Welcome, Master Wizards, to Raymond's Rest. Later, almost dusk, the wizards embark on their journey south, then northeast around the mountains. They go to the stables and buy horses from them for a hundred gold apiece. The three ride off fast on their horses, staffs held to their side against the horses. It is very hot and dry here, but it has isolated marshes sometimes, close to the mountains. They avoid them, since they are rumored to have bandits and even orcs camped at them. They ride with haste and do not stop until the next day at noon, where they find a small settlement right as they get to the Felgen Bridge. It is a large settlement of human-friendly Felgen called the Shield Branded Clan. The Shield Breed Clan. They stable their horses at the stables and walk to the small shack of an inn to rest until tomorrow. Small and large camps are strewn about all over town in thousands of shack-sized buildings. Felgens are not known for their ingenuity or craftsmanship, but rarely could anyone hope to defeat one in battle. There are also gypsy caravans stopped all over the city, gypsy merchants peddling wares to any passerby. Many humans and some elves also walk the streets of Felgen Bridge. 
It is the hub of the north in all directions, mainly the east and the west toward the north. The Felgen of Felgen Bridge warned travelers of an uprising in the Felgen community called the Felgen Revolutionaries, seekers of the Amulet of Sora. Norman has been following this uprising through whispers and by investigating Hegebro, the supposed, the supposed leader of this uprising. This puts Hypost in an immediate danger as Hegebro's banded army is stationed in many hidden places in the marshes close to High Post. The next day in Fendragel, Mirasami is sitting in the kitchen eating breakfast with Renault and the servants when a messenger comes in and gallantly says, Princess, you have a guest, an elf, if you can believe it. Surprised, she says, let him in then. The elf, dressed wildly by wearing precious elven jewelry, walks in to greet her with a smile. It is an honor to meet you, Princess. I am here about your Fade Dragon. Tell me, what have you named her? Urasami, with a confused look, asks, It is a she, you say? I thought it was a male. I named it Aron. The elf laughs, and, a, and then a serious look comes over him. One of this Fade Dragon's parents was once the companion of Ascadia himself. You inherited its power. To the amulet, and I am not, if I am not mistaken, the the fey dragon curse as well. She looks down at the table and says, "Yes, yes, I have." The elf puts his hand around her and says, "We do not know who sent you the amulet or why you absorbed its power, but I assure you, we will find out. I would like your permission to take her on to Treetop Point to learn of the ancient way." She belongs with her own kind, and, but, and besides, she is royalty there, so it's, so to speak. Mirasami gets a gleam in her eye and replies, It sounds like she would be best there after all. Very well. She belongs with the elves. I am happy for her. Can I come visit her whenever I want? The elf replies, of course. Mirasami gently slams her hand on the table and says, It is decided then. You may take her to your fellow elves for training. Perhaps someday I will see her again. I do not hate hate her for this curse she has given me. Mirasami says with a part smile, Renault, my love, see this elf out and make sure the stable people let him have it around. Renault taps his napkin against his lips a few more times. Then gets out of the chair and walks out with the elf. They make their way to the stables, and Renault asks, You didn't bring yourself a horse? The elf replied, Yes, he is just yonder. Renault could not believe his eyes. Yet another fade dragon was saddled not far from the stables. We don't use them as horses unless they choose to do such. We communicate with them well and would not subject them to it unless they volunteered. Renault shakes his head and says, Right then. The elf speaks with to Aaron in elven tongue and she looks at the castle then looks at the elf and, and they depart just above the trees headed for treetop point Danon finally reaches the enslaver hideout in silverstone city the temple of the serpent the seven remaining enslavers are here gathered edward has not made it so they go on without him Danon mcbride puts on the amulet and says there has been a thorn in our side for some time these necromancers will finally get what is coming to them. Span out and meet me at Burial Cove near Dress. Fight your way in, but leave Obsidian to me. He is far too powerful for any of you. Move out. The men bustle within the temple, grabbing daggers and clothing, sacks and money, scrolls and books. Dan and pauses for a moment to think about what Darkin recently told him, that Norman Gaul was his brother, separated at birth. A man who never smiles looks up and smiles a genuine smile and walks out of the temple door. For four hours, Norman has been as honorable as possible, torturing an orc bandit near High Post for information. He is about to crack. Norman has been using a red-hot poker and tongs found at the camp using the orc's own fires. They were no doubt used to torture innocents. I shall speak now, yes, I shall speak now, yells the orc. Speak then, Norman says, 
throwing down the tongs and poker, still hot. Hegebro and Dane want to start an orc empire in Fendragon, using the amulet to, re to unite the orcs in Felden. Norman hands the orc a small dagger so that he may cut himself loose once he has departed. The orc is tied to a large stump, lying motionless. Norman gets back on his horse and heads for Hypos to meditate on this and formulate a plan. Meanwhile, Danon is back at Darkin's hideout, not far away. He walks in, carrying the amulet in hand. Darkin smiles and says, You are now free from me, Danon. Be gone now. Danon replies gladly, and the demon that seemingly was under Dan Danon's control is lured to a box with a paper lid. As it is sucked in the box, folds and ignites into ashes. The demon's madness has left Danon and he no longer thinks himself leader of the enslavers. He walks outside of Darkens on foot and heads toward Hypos, which is not far off. Darken promised to send the amulet on a messenger crow to Princess Murasami. He commands a crow to fly in. He ties the amulet on its leg and puts a note on it as well. He then commands the bird to be off to Fendraggle to prevent the Great Felgen War. Later in the afternoon, the ground shakes near Fendraggle as a large number of orcs and Felgen invade, not harming anyone yet. They march into the city, sternly, shields and spears, axes and swords. They stop at the castle and Dane and Hegabro walk into the castle, demanding the amulet. It is not here, the, and, Renault, and Renault says, it was stolen from us, please turn back and leave our castle. Renault, terrified by their sheer numbers, as are all the people, paces nervously at Murasami's bedchamber. War breaks out on the streets, and, Fel and Felgen start putting villagers to the axe. Guards are hurled onto shields, and people panic, fleeing the city. In the chaos, Renault snatches Murasami up, and they flee from f from the kingdom of f the kingdom of Fendragle as refugees. On horseback, they head for the farms of Yonlia in the village of Drell.